Hello, friends, and welcome back to the All Things New podcast. Thank you so much for tuning in for another episode. I hope that you all have been doing well and that you've been having a beautiful October. I don't know about where you guys live, but the colors have been so stunning where I am. Oh my goodness, it's been so beautiful, and I've been really enjoying the beauty of God's creation. And I just, I love autumn. I love October. It is so beautiful. Anyways, so I hope you guys have been doing good, and I'm excited for today's episode, which is titled The Secret Place. Last week, I talked a little bit about a similar topic. Um, I talked about communion with the Lord, and this is very much tied into that, but I wanted to delve into a little bit about the secret place, and similar to last week, I don't have a ton of notes but I have the Holy Spirit, Um, so that's all I need. Um, I wanted to start off by the same passage I actually started off last week's episode with, which is Psalms chapter 91, and I will just be reading verse 1, which says, He who dwells in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I did a little bit of digging um, when it comes to a couple of those Hebrew words. So the Hebrew word for the word um, dwell, that's translated to English, um, the word is yeshab. And this word means to sit down. Let's unpack each of these words really quick. So to sit down, it makes me think of Mary when she's sitting at the feet of Jesus in the New Testament. And Martha is busy working, which there's nothing wrong with that. But Mary recognizes that Jesus is there, that he's in the room, and that this is an opportunity to learn from him and to sit at his feet and to absorb his words and let his words wash over her. And while there's nothing wrong with preparing the house like Martha was, Mary recognizes this is a moment for me to sit down. Let me sit down and learn from this man, from the Son of God. Let me learn from the most wise person that ever was. And so, and the Lord says that she chose the good part. Like she she knows, like she recognizes um, this one thing. He says, one thing, this one thing. And that's reminiscent of Psalm, um, actually not Psalm, Psalm 91. It's rem- reminiscent of Psalm 27. And I haven't written any of these down, but they're just, you know, thank you, Holy Spirit. Um, and Psalm 90, and so, par- pardon me, Psalm 27, it says, one thing, this is verse four, one thing that I have desired of the Lord, that will I seek, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life to behold the beauty of the Lord. That's another really good one. Um, Psalm 27. So, so, so good. Anyways, as I was saying, to sit down. So Mary sits down at Jesus' feet. She's not there to um, pour out all the things she's petitioning for. And there's nothing wrong with that because we are told in the word of God to ask the Lord for things. But she recognizes that the Lord is teaching, let me be his student. Let me sit at his feet and absorb all of these words of wisdom, this life-giving word that he's speaking over me. So when you enter into the secret place, just sit, sit down. Don't like, you know, and of course, there's nothing wrong with asking for things again. I'm going to keep saying that again because I'm not saying that you should not pray for things or have requests because the word says to make your requests known to God and Jesus says ask seek and knock we are literally commanded to ask the Lord for things however there are times and a lot of times and this is we were created for intimacy with the Lord but there are times when we should just come to the Lord just to sit with him and not to bring your list of things, of requests. 
again, it's not wrong to have requests, but we need to, especially in the Western culture, we're so used to hustling and going, 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 going that we never sit for anything. And the Lord has called us to sit with him, not just to go run around and run around and be chaotic. And, you know, it's not, they're not bad things. It's not wrong to have a job. It's not wrong to be busy like Martha. It's not wrong to get the house ready for guests. But the Lord's calling you to sit, to sit with him, to learn from him. He's not calling you to be so busy that you never have time to sit with him. He's called you to sit and dwell with him. So there's that first word there. Um, One of the definitions of this word is to sit down, which is beautiful. Another word, another descriptive word here is to remain, to remain, to stay, not to just pop in and out, to remain. And this is a key about the secret place that um, is so important for us to remember and recognize is that the secret place is not a physical place. I mean, you can enter into the secret place in a particular spot that's more common, like your bedroom or something else. But the secret place is within your spirit, within the depths of your spirit, a place you can go in your mind and just focus in on the Lord. The secret place is internal. And yes, it is good to have an environment that's nice and chill. As I'm recording this, and I kind of did this on purpose, I have low lights going on in my room, and I've got a candle, and it's really nice and chill, um, which this is kind of how I like it to be at night anyways. But um, it doesn't have to be like this particular ambiance, which that helps. It really does. It helps mitigate distractions. However, there should be a stillness that we can come to in our spirits to where we can meet with the Lord anywhere because we're meeting with him in our mind or our spirit, whether it's driving or doing the dishes or running errands, we can meet with him wherever we are because his spirit lives within us. And so the secret place isn't a physical place, but it's a place within your spirit. And if the secret place is within our spirit, then that means that we don't have to leave. But we have to make that decision to remain. We have to make that decision to stay in communion, to choose not to come in and out, but we can choose to remain and sit. And that comes with a lot of reframing of our minds, of renewing of our minds, as the Lord helps us do as we spend more time with him. But we should get to a point and i'm not saying that anyone that like if you like you've like you know quote unquote arrived but in our walk with the lord we shouldn't be excluding him to our devotional time that we have or to the time when we are at church those things are good and beautiful and we need those things however We should be integrating the Lord into every part of our lives, every part, every moment, and inviting him. And that's a big piece when it comes to the secret place. It's if you are inviting him into everything in your life, you are remaining in the secret place. You are dwelling there. You are living there. It's not just a place you go in and out. It's not like... You got to run in the store real quick and then leave. Like, no, like you're staying. I know that was a random example, but you get what I was getting at. Um, The secret place is a place where we stay, where we should stay, where we should remain, where we should dwell, where we should take residence in. Another word, um, another descriptive word of this Hebrew word is to settle, to settle. Think of like when, think of, um, the most recent trip you went on and think about like, okay, like you finally got to like your hotel or your Airbnb or wherever you were staying and you get there and you've got all your baggage and all that stuff and you just want to like settle in 
And so you unpack really fast and then you put your clothing like in a drawer or in the closet or you hang them up or wherever. You figure out where you're going to sleep and everyone else decides room assignments. And then you can just kind of like find a nice place and rest there and settle. And take a breather. Take a breather. I remember one of the most recent trips I took with my family. Um, it was beautiful. It was like a little cabin in the woods next to a river. It was one of the most peaceful places I've ever been. It was lovely. But there was this giant hammock in the back. There was like this Florida room and there was this giant hammock. And that was one of the first things I did because I love hammocks. And I was like, oh, I got to go lay there. I got to go lay there. And it was so nice. And I got to settle. I got to rest. I got to sit. I got to relax. I got to let my guard down, let my shoulders down, just relax. And this is what the Lord is calling you to do. He's calling you to settle in him, to let your guard down, to relax, to let, to let your baggage down, to let all of your burdens down, and to sit with him, and to settle. And to just take a breather and breathe him in and breathe him out and just rest. That is what he's calling you to do. And in our Western culture, for you, those of you that are listening in the Western world, I know not of y'all, not of, uh, all of you guys are Westerners. Also, by the way, sorry for my language. I don't know what's going on. Like my brain is being a little bit chaotic, but it's fine. Anyways. For those of us who are Westerners, we're so used to, especially if we're like living more in closer proximity to cities, um, but generally um, in the Western world, we are very, very like workaholic, hustle mindset. And I hate that. Like I, I never want to be like that, but it's ingrained in our culture. And we feel as if, if we are resting, we are unproductive or we're doing something wrong or if we're not doing anything we're doing everything wrong, right? And that is so wrong. Yes, we need to be productive and busy. The Bible says, he who does not work shall not eat. Like, we have to be responsible and do our part. However, we should not be working ourselves so hard that we burn out, but not only that, but that we never get a chance to sit and settle with the Lord. You were created to be close to him. And we oftentimes have built our lives around busyness. And I understand that not everyone has the chance to sit and have devotional if they have a job, if they got a bunch of kids, like whatever. But that's the thing about the secret place being internal. Being able to get to this place in your mind and your spirit to where you are meeting with the Lord. And it's okay, like, and it's, you know, so not everyone gets the chance to get away, but I think it's a blessing to do so. And if you have the means to get away for a few minutes, that will just refresh you because you need to be connected to the source. But we need to reframe or we need to help ask the Lord to help us to reframe our minds um, so that we can rest in him. And not be so concerned about the busyness of what's going on in your home that you forget who's sitting there. And you forget that the Lord is right there waiting for you. And so I love that other descriptive word to settle. That just means so much. And just because I've traveled a, quite a bit, and I just, every time I get to my hotel or Airbnb or wherever I'm staying, like I am like so ready to settle, right? Like I, after a long day of travel, I'm so ready to just like, ah, take my shoes off and put my clothes away and like take a shower and like lay down for like, just, you know, get some tension out of my body. This is what the Lord is calling you to do. He's calling you to settle in him. Another descriptive word that I found incredibly interesting is to marry to Mary. And this is beautiful because we see this picture of Christ and his bride being married and united. And the reason that God created marriage is to reflect 
his relationship with his church, with his bride, with his people. And so when you think of marriage, there is a unity that happens. There is a man and a wife, man and woman, husband and wife, that are, you know, they are two, but they become one. There is this unity. There is this oneness. And this is what the Lord is also calling you to. It's unity with him. It's you being so united with him that your desires and everything look just like his. That you spend so much time with him that he's all you want. And that doesn't mean that you're neglecting anything in your life. That's not responsible because the Lord has given us things to steward in our lives. But, oh my goodness, like, we have to get, like, to this place where we're like, I just want to be one with the Lord. And that's what he's, you know, that's, that's our destiny is oneness with him. It's marriage to the bridegroom. And he wants for you to partake in this oneness, in this unity, in your relationship with him. To be one, to be one with him, to be united, to be close. That's what you were created for. You were created for intimacy with the Lord. And his desire is to be one with you. But in order for that to happen, we must dwell. We must dwell with him. Another descriptive phrase is um, to ease into, and this kind of um, goes a little bit along with to settle, but to ease into, to just kind of slowly, just kind of meld and become one with. It's kind of similar to that, to just um, slowly become become acquainted and familiar. I really liked that descriptive phrase. And then another one um, that I absolutely love, which I love all of these, are all so enlightening and so special. But the word to inhabit, to inhabit, to live in, to not just, once again, not to just pop in and out, but to live. That's your home. Your home is the secret place with the Lord. We must make the secret place our home. We must make that where we go back to, where we are constantly going back to. Not a place where you visit every once in a while. It's where you go back to. That's where you lay your head down. That's where you rise up. That's where you eat. That's where you rest. That is where you live. That's where you live. The idea of dwelling, you're living there. It's a place you're familiar with, a place that you come to several times a day, over and over and over. That's where you live. That's your home. Your home is the secret place. It should be the secret place. We must make the secret place our home and our spirits. And then the last word that I jotted down in relation to dwelling is to tarry. So to wait, to dwell, to sit in, to rest and This is our calling. It's to sit with him, to know him, to become one with the Lord. This is what he's called us to. So I'll read Psalm 91 again. As I read it, keep in mind these descriptive words. Um, Actually, no, you know what? I'm kidding. I'm going to read some words that mean secret, and then I'm going to read the verse again. Um, So the Hebrew word for secret here, like the secret place, um, I'm not going to try to pronounce it because it's long. And even though I have a background in Hebrew, I'm going to butcher it. And I don't feel like doing that. So some descriptive words for secret mean, for example, a hiding place. I love that. It's a place where you find refuge, a protection, and a covering and a disguise. I love this. I love this. It's a protection. It's a hiding place. It's where you go to find refuge or you know you will be safe. It's a very, very safe place and a covering and a disguise. So knowing this, knowing this, we should 
clothe ourselves in Jesus, to cover ourselves, to hide in him, to not just become acquainted, but to become one with him. That is what you are called to. You're called to oneness with him. So I'm actually going to read the verse this time. Keep in mind these descriptive words that I have shared um, that mean that go into more depth of the word dwell and the word secret. He who dwells in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. This verse is beautiful. It's become a life verse for me. And it is so just, it's, it's beautiful because it reminds me of where, where my source is, where my home is. Um, and that secret place is what I'm called to. And that's what you're called to. It's what every believer is called to. We're not just merely called to live a lukewarm lifestyle because the lukewarm lifestyle is something that sickens God's heart. Jesus didn't just die for you to be lukewarm, but he died to be one with you. So we must remember that. And I have to ask for forgiveness for myself when I get into times when I am lukewarm. I have to ask the Lord to forgive me because sometimes I get so comfortable and I distance myself, not intentionally, but it happens as life. Like we get busy, we forget, we prioritize other, th other things, so we must ask for forgiveness. But the Lord has not called you just to be complacent. He's called you to be close. The next verse, or the next group of verses I like to read, come from Psalms chapter 37, and they are verses 4 through 7, which say, Delight yourself also in the Lord and he shall give you the desires of your heart. Commit your way to the Lord. Trust also in him, and he shall bring it to pass. He shall bring forth your righteousness as the light, and your justice as the noonday. Rest in the Lord, and wait patiently for him. Do not fret because of him who prospers in his way, because of the man who brings wicked schemes to pass. This is one of my favorite verses, another life verse. But the beginning is really special. It says, delight yourself also in the Lord, and he shall give you the desires of your heart. As I mentioned in the previous passage in Psalm 91, when we live in the secret place, there's a oneness that will occur with the Lord. And with that oneness becomes a merging of our desires with God's. And that doesn't mean that we are like his desires would be like like the things that we want for us. God's like, oh, okay, okay, like you can have whatever you want. No, we are being transformed and conformed to his image. So his desires become ours as you live in the secret place. And it is not something that's like, um, like you're fighting necessarily because when you live in the secret place, when you are one with the Lord, your heart begins to reflect his and you will want what he does. And whatever you thought was a good idea, you're like, you know what, Lord, I had this idea, but whatever you have, let it be done. Because at that point, we, when we are one with the Lord, so are our desires. And we may not always know exactly what we need, but the Lord does, and we need to lean into him. But the closer you get to the Lord, the more you're going to look like him, the more you will reflect him. And that's another crucial piece about the secret place. It's that we are to be conformed to his image. But in order for that to happen, we have to spend time with him. We have to dwell. We have to remain. We have to tarry. We have to live and, and inhabit in that secret place. 
And the next part of that verse um, in Psalm 37 says, commit your way to the Lord, trust also in him, and he shall bring it to pass. Um, and it talks a little bit about resting in the Lord too, a little bit later down in that passage, I think in verse six or seven, it says, rest in the Lord and wait patiently for him. This is another crucial aspect as well. Rest. We see that rest. In Matthew 11, um, 28, the Lord says, come to me, all you who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. The most perfect, pure, satisfying, complete rest that we can ever find is in the arms of Jesus. There is nowhere else that we can find this rest. You can only find it in the secret place. There might be counterfeit rest in the world. There may be substances that make you think you feel at rest or things or only Jesus can provide that perfect rest for you. So if you are in need of rest, if you are in need of a break, if you need to just let it, let it go, <laughs> rest in Jesus. Enter into the secret place. Come close because his burden is easy. His yoke is easy. His burden is light, as he says in Matthew 11, verse 29. And he will give you rest. He will give you the deepest rest you could ever find for your soul. The next passage I'm reading comes from Jeremiah chapter 33. And it's verse 3, which says, Call to me and I will answer you and show you great and mighty things which you do not know. I love this because the Lord desires to show you secret things in the secret place. If there's like, think of like middle school or something, which that makes me cringe because I don't think middle school was great for anyone. Um, but if you think of like, if your friend has a secret, you're not going to like shout it out in front of the whole school. You're going to be like, hey, come over here. And they're going to like whisper it to you and they're going to want to get close. God wants to be close. He wants to share beautiful secret things, but you have to be close in order for you to hear that still small voice, to recognize his voice in the depths of your spirit. And I'm actually planning on doing another episode about hearing the voice of God, but we have to come close. He wants you to come close so he can share you secret things. Um, beautiful secret things that are just for you. He desires to share those things with you. And if you want to hear those things, come to the secret place. And we're not like, you know, I'm not just saying come to the secret place just so you can like get this or get that. Like, no, the Lord, like communion with the Lord is the most beautiful thing you could ever experience ever in this world. Um, it's the most satisfying and fulfilling thing. Um, but if we are in communion with the Lord, there are so many beautiful things, beautiful byproducts that come from that. And we're not seeking communion to receive these things. We're just seeking communion so we can be close to the Lord. But there will be inevitable, by, inev inevitable my goodness, there will be inevitable byproducts when it comes to um, dwelling with the Lord and, you know, receiving secret things <laughs> um, from Him is one of those things. And of course, joy that is so full, the most full joy, the fullness of joy and peace and healing for your soul, rest. All of these things are going to come from the secret place. Um, he has everything you need. We lack nothing in him. We lack absolutely nothing. So if you are dwelling with him, you will have everything you need. He will supply everything that you need, everything, even the things you don't even know you need. He knows it and he has it for you. And it is in the secret place with him. The last passage I'm reading comes from Matthew chapter 6, verse 6. And it says, But you, when you pray, go into your room. And when you have shut your door, pray to your Father who is in the secret place. And your Father who sees in the secret place will reward you openly. 
we're getting back to this concept of the secret place that Jesus is talking about here. And he's saying, and he's actually con- contrasting this with the Pharisees in the previous verse. He talks about like hypocrites or like Pharisees. He's, I think he says hypocrites. Um, they are praying loudly in front of the temple so everyone can see them and they're boasting about these things. And Jesus is saying, you know what? When you pray, go to your room, close the door. Don't let anybody know what's going on. (laughs) Pray to your father in the secret place. And then he says, as a result of that, as a byproduct, your father who sees in secret will reward you openly. And again, communion with the Lord from a pure heart. And the Lord looks at your heart. That's what he cares about, your heart position. But communion with the Lord from a heart of curiosity, a heart of wonder. We don't seek God just so we can like say, oh, I get this blessing. Like, of course, that's going to come, right? And it's not wrong to desire that or want that, but seek the Lord for his heart. Seek him because you want him, because you want to know him. And again, there's nothing wrong with wanting peace and joy like no like that's what the lord has given us um and those are byproducts of being with him in the secret place but if we are wanting to enter into the secret place our hearts must be in the right place and we must ask the lord as well to reveal to us anything in our hearts that are displeasing to him anything that is separating us from him because he wants the whole thing he wants your whole heart he doesn't just want part of it He didn't give you part of his. He gave you everything. He gave his life for you. He gave you everything. And like, for me, I feel like the least I can do is give him everything back. But that's what he wants. He wants your entire heart. He doesn't want you to to conceal things. He can already see them, but he doesn't want you to conceal parts of yourself. He wants all of it. He wants the ugly parts. He wants the parts you're ashamed of. He wants everything 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 because he will begin to change your heart and make it look just like his that oneness will occur as we live in the secret place as we abide as we dwell as we stay as we marry as we become one with him in the secret place so in our lives as followers of christ as his chosen, as his elect, as his children that he loves so deeply. He has created us and called us to live in close proximity to him. He didn't tear the veil of the temple just so we can stay in the outer courts. No, he tore the veil so we can enter into the Holy of Holies. And if you're not familiar with what I'm referring to, when Jesus died on the cross, the, there was a veil in the temple that was ripped from top to bottom. And this veil was a visible separation of the outer courts in the temple and the inner courts where the Spirit of God dwelt in the Holy of Holies. And when Jesus died, that barrier was broken. He's not called you just to linger in the outer gates. He's called you to come in the most secret place, the most holy place. He made that possibility for us. And so as believers, we should recognize he opened the door. He made a way for us to get to him to go into the most holy place because guess what? If we are redeemed, we are holy. We are clean. Of course, we're not perfect, but he redeemed us. We are now covered by him and we can enter into the most holy place. And this place is where he has so many beautiful things for us and his heart and being one with him, getting back to what we were created aided for which is perfect unity with him so we should real realize and remember and recognize that we are not created for complacency or for 
the lukewarm, but we are we were created to be close to him. And he's made a way for us to be close to him. We can enter into the secret place. We can live there. We can dwell there. We can inhabit that place. And we can become one with the Lord. And our desires will become one with his. Our dreams and goals will become one with his. We will begin to reflect his goodness and his beauty. And then from living in the secret place, we will be able to share his goodness with the world around us and share his kindness and his love and his power. But in order to reach this world, we can't just visit the secret place every now and then. We have to live there. We have to dwell there. We have to make it our home. We have to make it our place of residence. He's calling you to the secret place. He's calling you to communion. He's calling you to get back to why you were created, to commune with him, to be one with him, to walk with him with no separation. That's what he's calling you to. So I encourage you to get back to the secret place, to get back to the place of of pure communion with him. And you don't have to be perfect. Of course, no one is. Just come. Open your heart. He has so many things he wants to share with you and show you and reveal to you. He has so many things, so many things. And so I encourage you to get into the secret place. Turn your heart to the Lord. Open your heart to what he has for you because, my goodness, this journey of of learning who he is, of discovering his heart will be an eternal journey and that is thrilling and beautiful and wonderful. And he cannot wait to show you things about himself. He cannot wait to reveal himself to you. So get into the secret place. Get into that quiet place in your spirit and commune with the one who died for you because he loves you so, so much more than you could ever imagine. That is all I've got for you guys today. This episode was kind of long, but you know what? I'm here for it because this is something that's very special and important and something that I knew that the Lord wanted to speak. Um, So I hope it encouraged you. I hope it blessed you. If you haven't already, I would appreciate a rating or review. That would mean a lot. That would be very special. Um, Yeah, that would help me out and I'd appreciate it. If you know of anyone who could use this message or something similar, feel free to send it their way. Um, And I hope it encouraged you. If it did, let me know. Um, Yeah. It's not like I have to have validation or anything. But it would, you know, yeah. Nice comments are good. Um, Anyways, I'm rambling now. (laughs) I love you guys. Thanks again for tuning in for another episode, and I will talk to y'all next Tuesday. Ciao.